Alexis Markowski set to jump tip for the Huskers against Rachel Haitala and Panthers control the tip. They'll get the first look at it here. Great crowd on hand here inside Pinnacle Bank Arena. Exactly, Nebraska starting out a man-to-man -man defense. The big key for Nebraska's defense today is Northern Iowa shoots the ball so well from three, they're really going to have to guard the three-point line very well. Quick takeaway from Hybe. Looks like Northern Iowa is also starting out a man-to-man. -man. They will run several defenses at the Nebraska Cornhuskers today, but they're starting out in man-to-man. -man. Kroll takes it to the rim. No good. You're seeing you and I push tempo again, both teams. The Cornhuskers and the Panthers are going to push tempo today a lot. And shoot a bunch of threes, as we just saw. Nice feed from Hyvie to Borm, but a little too far under the rim there. McDermott loses the handle. Here comes Hyvie back the other way. She's going to take it to the rim and goes all the way down and out. And quick pace for both of these teams to start out. Northern Iowa has two turnovers already, which is uncharacteristic of their team. Markowski misses everything there. Both teams are trying to feel each other out and push tempo. And if it keeps up this pace all game, we're going to be in for an exciting game. <laughs> I said get the scoreboard ready, but they haven't scored yet. But it is going to be a fun pace. A lot of shots will go up for sure. This matchup, Markowski on Buffelli, which you said is a key matchup to watch for. Exactly. Buffelli is such a tough guard because she can – Score inside, she's been to the free throw line a lot this season, but she is so efficient at stepping out and hitting the three two, shooting over 40% from three. So she'll be a tough cover today for Markowski. Shot clock winding down the take, offensive rebound by Buffelli back up. No good, and Bourne pulls it down. What a great tough rebound by Isabel Bourne, stuck with it and was able to come down with it. Shelley bounce pass into Markowski. Strong take and finish. Huskers on the board first. And there's actually pretty good defense by Haytala. She remained vertical. She, was right she made that a very tough shot for Markowski, but Markowski was strong with the ball, found a way to put it in. McDermott on the take. Gets the roll on that one. What a nice little runner by McDermott. She just got herself to the basket. She's such a quick guard. She's going to be able to get herself to the basket a lot today. Nebraska's going to have to figure out a way to counter that. Inside Nebraska. again to Markowski. Double team. Through the double team. Puts it up, but no good. Nebraska's trying to establish that inside game early, and the refs are going to let them play, it looks like. Quickly back the other way, and a quick three from Haytala. Shelly, nice feed ahead to Bourne. She gets bumped. She'll head to the line for two. And that fast break opportunity was started by a great box out by Maddie Kroll. Maddie Kroll had Buffila Bef blocks out on the other end. They were able to push tempo. And what a great run by Isabel Bourne. And you need to reward those bigs when they make a rim run. And that's a connection that we've seen on display since Jazz Shelly has come to Nebraska. The uh, they played a lot of basketball together, and they can just find each other. Jazz finds Izzy a lot on those on those uh, fast break opportunities. Exactly, you love the connection, and and Isabel Bourne, a testament to her that she's she's running the floor hard almost every time. It's the second free throw to go there. Three, two Huskers. Riley Goble into the game for you and I. So it should be an interesting matchup between Hybe and McDermott today, too. Hybe is a little bit bigger than McDermott, which might help her out, but McDermott is so quick. That'll be an interesting matchup to watch between those two guards today. Great defensive possession there from Nebraska. As you and I has gone a little bit smaller here. Exactly. The and everyone on the floor from you and I can shoot the three. So the Cornhusker defense is gonna have to find a way to run them off the line. Shelly gets an open look at it and drains it from the top of the key. Yeah, Shelly is so good at that shot. She has the confidence. Just step, quick step back. She gets it off so quickly. That's a good sign for Nebraska that she's hit hit one early on. The last game that Nebraska played, they struggled uh, with shooting in the entire first half. Kick out to Green. She gets that one to go. 
Great shot by Green. They're always shot ready. She had her feet set. Let it fly. Green had 17 points in the win over Colorado State. Inside to Bourne, double T. Markowski chases it down. Back out to Hybe. On the take, no good. McDermott with the rebound. That was a solid take, but Finley played really great defense there. We did not allow Hybe to get to the basket and contested the shot. Kroll on McDermott. Finley for three, off the mark. Shelly with the rebound, and here we go. Quickly back the other way. Over to Kroll for three. Rims out. Bourne pulls down the strong offensive rebound. Back out to Shelly. <laughs> Kick back out to Bourne for three. What great effort on the board by the Cornhuskers. Isabella Bourne's effort got her that first opportunity. And then you see Markowski going to the board hard. It's going to be a rough game today. The refs are letting them play. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Open looks from the three-point line. The basic difference right now is uh, UNI is shooting such a good percentage. They've each taken about the same amount of three-pointers, but um, UNI is hitting at a 50% clip right now. UNI three of six, Huskers one for six. Inside to Haytilla, five on the shot clock, kick out, swing around. Extra pass, green from the top of the key, drains it. What great ball movement by the Panthers. They didn't rush. There were seven seconds left on the clock. They just kept hitting the next pass, next pass, till they got the best open look. Eight-point lead for you and I. Hybe on the take. Rims out. There was a lot of contact on that play right there. Like I said, it seems like the refs are going to let them play today, so both teams are going to have to adjust to that. I and mean, as the game goes, uh, both teams are going to have to adjust to how the refs are calling the game. And a foul moving screen on Goble. I believe that's who they called. Yes, and exactly. She didn't come set, and the defender was trying to close back out to the shooter, and, and that was a moving screen. Good call by the refs. Kaylin Morgan in for the Panthers. Seeing a lot of quick subs here for both teams. With this pace, um, <laughs> both teams. UNI does play pretty deep into their bench in all their games, so that's going to help them if this pace keeps up. Nebraska hasn't played quite as many people throughout the season. We'll see if that plays into the, into the game if this pace keeps going. Kendall Coley in for the Huskers as well. Hybe again on the take. Gets that one to go. Strong finish from Hybe there. Hybe does such a great shot, j job of getting herself to the basket, and she finishes very well. We're seeing Nebraska pick up the pressure a little bit. They're putting more ball pressure, try to keep them out of the rhythm on the three-point line. We'll see how you and I handles that. Ivy takes it away, pushes back the other way. Kick out to Shelly. Draws the foul on Lauby. And again, Coach Warren showing a lot of confidence in Taryn Wharton. I'm actually a little surprised at how Maya McDermott came out in this game that they've rested her quite so. They've rested her almost half of this quarter. So, oh, checking back in now, right but, now. But I was a little surprised at how much rest they gave her. 54 seconds left in the first quarter. 16 to 10, Northern Iowa leading Nebraska. Still, Northern Iowa is applying great pressure defense. Shelly is feeling it to start this game. Two for two from three for Jazz Shelly. Cuts the lead to three. Crowd getting loud here inside Pinnacle Bank Arena. 30 seconds. Comes Haytala on the take. No good. Draws a foul, though. Nebraska bench does not like it. Fallon Markowski. 
Markowski has to come out and defend the three-point line, so that opens her up a little bit for Haytala to get to the basket. Haytala actually put the ball on the ground, did a great job of getting to the basket, and uh, the refs saw too much contact on the on the shot. So Haytala to the line. She's um, moved into the starting lineup for the Panthers after had a season-ending injury to Cynthia Wolf, their starting center, senior. Into February, had a season-ending injury, so Haytill has done a good job for them stepping into that role. Exactly, and again, as they all are great shooters, she shoots over 45% from the three-point line, so you've got to respect her from the outside as well as her inside game. Makes the second free throw. Shot okay. clock is off, 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Ivy pulls it out, looking for the play call from Amy Williams. We'll see what kind of defense UNI does here, if they're going to try to switch a D. Nope, they're still playing man-to-man. -man. Six, five, Hybe, or Shelly over to Hybe, and she drains it. And that is the first quarter. What a nice play by Jazz Shelly. UNI hit 12 three-pointers in their opening round win over Colorado State. Average over eight, as do the Huskers. And not only did the Northern Iowa make 12, but they shot for the game 54% from the field, which is unreal for the, for a game for the team. Here's Maggie Mendelson, the freshman in, getting her first minutes here for Nebraska. Out to Bourne. She drains another three for the Huskers. And Northern Iowa's going to have to figure out how to keep Nebraska out of the lane. Anytime Sam Hybe's able to attack and get into the lane, that opens them up. They're going to have to have someone come help. That opens up the three-point shot for Nebraska. So the Northern Iowa's going to have to figure out how to defend that. Nebraska takes the lead. And that was actually a great cut by Buffelli. She slipped the screen, cut to the basket, but even better, help side defense from Nebraska by Isabel Bourne. Loose ball. Shelly over to Hybe. Inside over to Bourne. Nice move, soft touch. Huskers up four and you and I want a timeout. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. You're gonna wanna see a little more movement in your offense. Now they're back to man-to-man. -man. Northern Iowa's playing man-to-man -man defense. Inside to Izzy Bourne. Nice finish with the left hand. And what a strong finish. Buffelli's playing, uh, or sorry, Haytel is playing great defense. And as if Izzy Bourne was very strong with that ball. Somehow the Huskers lost Buffelli. And you don't want to lose Buffelli. Great take, great recognition that she wasn't being guarded. Caught the ball, ripped it through, went to the basket strong, was able to get the shot and the foul. So she'll head to the line. She's been great at that all year. She has uh, gotten herself to the line um, a lot this season. I believe that's she's got 15 double doubles, and she's able to score a lot from the line as well. Eight 20 point games. So that was her first field goal, right there. So Huskers have done a good job so far on on matching up with her, but she can score in bunches. And she does get herself, Buffelli gets herself to the line a lot, over 200 times uh, this season, but she's shooting 64%. So I know that's the area of her game that she'll really want to focus on before next season. Inside to Markowski, goes up strong, and there's a block from Goebel. Crowd wants a foul. It's really strong, great defense by Northern Iowa. Markowski will need to try to make a quicker move. The defense on the other end. <laughs> We're seeing very physical play today. And I know the coaches have talked how both these teams are very gritty. What a nice play from Shelly. Finds Markowski open at the free throw line. So as these teams keep adjusting to the play, they're going to have to find ways to continue to be physical without fouling. The refs are letting them be pretty physical with each other. Goble jumper, no good. Another offensive rebound back up. Buffelli. Great work on the offensive boards by Buffelli. 
Just finding a way to get in there, grab that ball, and, and score on the putback. Jazz Shelley with the lay in. She's got a great screen. She turned the corner and attacked the basket hard. Four point lead for Nebraska. Finley on the take. Shelley with the rebound. From the top of the key, no. Ani Stewart puts it back up. Ani Stewart got herself in good position to get that rebound, just was unable to make the put back. Wharton for three. Rims out. And the pace has picked up again. Yeah. We're seeing both teams really pushing the ball, trying to score in transition, but both teams are doing an excellent job of getting back as well. Ronnie Stewart again fighting inside. Jump ball, you and I basketball. This is one of the greatest things about postseason basketball. Both these teams trying to get a win for their team. I actually love the physical play that they're not backing down to each other. They're getting in there. They're mixing it up. And it's great atmosphere for this crowd to watch today. And as you advance for, further in the tournament, if you're lucky enough to continue advancing, you're going to see continued the physical play continue to pick up. I like that the refs are letting them play. I feel like that's what postseason play is about. That's when you should be playing your toughest, your hardest, your grittiest. Three from the corner. Morgan and... That foul will be on Riley Goble. I think that's one thing that drives some coaches kind of crazy a little bit. They've been letting them play really physical, and then you really kind of have a touch foul there on Goble on the rebound, and, and that's what gets called. So I think sometimes just figuring out um, what you can and can't do. Shelly over to Hake for three. Boom! A great shot by Hake, just a freshman, but she stepped up many times this year for the Huskers and shot well when she's had to step into the starting lineup through an injury. Um, at just different points, she stepped in and really been confident to knock down that shot. Green says right back at you at the other end. Same thing, sophomore Green right back. You have to identify shooters immediately every time down the floor. Kelly out to Bourne. Green on Shelly, step back three. Wow, what a shooting performance we've got going on right now between you and I and Nebraska. It is back and forth. Yes, and Green playing great defense on Jazz Shelly. She's and we haven't seen Sam Hybe return yet from the locker room, so I don't know if it's looking very good that Sam Hybe will return or not. I guess we'll see after halftime. But Loose ball, Kroll is on the ground. Knocked off the Huskers, so no backcourt violation. And great screen by Hetler, Hetler right there. Dermott for three, no good. Bourne with another big rebound. Seven rebounds already. UNI is going back to that man-to-man -man defense. They're really doubling off the ball screen. Look at the freshman. Going tough to the rim. And one, Callan Hake. What a great take by the freshman. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Look at these numbers. Well, a couple things stick out to me. The first one is the turnover. So Nebraska has zero turnovers in the half, which is unreal. And the Panthers have eight, which is uncharacteristic of them. They only average 12 on the season. The other thing is the assists. So Iowa, Northern Iowa loves to share the ball. So they average about 14 assists a game, and they only have four right now. So that means Nebraska is doing a good job of, of not allowing them easy shots, making them try to create their own shot instead of being able to assist. Yeah, you mentioned you and I, 12 turnovers a game. It's 11th in the country. You do not turn it over often. And that's yes. an area that the Huskers had struggled with at times there at the end of this season to turn the ball over. So the fact that they're taking better care of the basketball, Amy Williams definitely got to be pleased with that. Exactly, and I don't keep all the stats, so I don't know all that, but I don't know if there probably is another half this year that Nebraska hasn't had a single turnover in a half. You're just tuning in. Nebraska without Sam Hybe. She left there in that first half with an injury to the leg and went to the locker room. We have not seen her come back out. 
first. So Kendall Moriarty starting the second half for Nebraska. And the good news, if there is good news for Nebraska with that injury, is that they played without Hybe for 10 games at the beginning of the season because she was recovering from a leg injury. So Coach Williams probably has talked to her team. They they do know how to play without Hybe. So um, hopefully that they won't let that them rattle that the Huskers in the second half. Moriarty for three. Huskers picking up where they left off there to close out the first half. Hot from three point. And what a big shot by the sophomore Moriarty. She had to step into the lineup, obviously not planned. So what, what a great shot of her to have that confidence to step up and hit it. Nebraska sticking with their man-to-man -man defense that they've played the entire game. Moriarty on Haytala. Green for three. Markowski with the rebound. And a great, great attack by Haytala. Again, they're so good at that, getting a great attack, getting into the lane and then kicking to a three-point shooter. Huskers go inside to Izzy Bourne. She draws the foul on Buffelli. And Izzy Bourne did such a good job of establishing post position early and, and low post position. She got great position, established it early. The Huskers were able to find her and shot it up with the left hand. Izzy with 10 points, seven rebounds, 11 points, seven rebounds, coming off the double-double in the win over Missouri State. So consistent, as Amy Williams talks a lot about how important she's been to this program. She's just steady Eddie, so consistent. Exactly, that glue that you know what you can expect from her every single game. She's not too high, she's not too low. You just know you're gonna get consistent effort, rebounding, scoring, defense, everything from her. Northern Iowa's really gonna have to settle down here. They can't let this game get more out of hand. So they really need to run a good set, try to get a score here, see the ball, go through the hoop to get some confidence to get their shooting back on track. Finley, the move inside, draws a foul on Moriarty, I believe. And Finley did just that. She got herself into the paint, did a step through move there, drew, drew the foul. Again, hit a free throw, see the ball go through the hoop. That'll help your team's confidence start going. And they need to start putting some back-to-back -back times down the court here where they're, where they're seeing the ball go through the hoop. Finley, an 80% free throw shooter, has not scored this game, coming off a season-high 19 points in the win over Colorado State. She actually was a member of the WNIT All-Tournament team back in 2021 when you and I made a run in that tournament to the semifinal. Kroll to Markowski, no good. Battle inside, Markowski comes back up with it. Loose ball, you and I comes away with it. That was a great pass by Kroll to even get it through. Just threaded the needle there, got it right to Markowski. But just the def interior defense by you and I today has been so tough. You're seeing Nebraska continue to get out all the way on that three-point line and really guard the three and not allow it. Bourne pulls down the rebound and is fouled. Great job of Izzy Bourne to go to the basket hard to grab that offensive rebound. She kind of came flying out of nowhere on that she one. She did. She, she crashed the boards hard, which you love to see if you're the Cornhuskers. Moriarty over to Kroll. Inside to Markowski. You're seeing you and I do a little more of this matchup zone, trying to keep Nebraska out of rhythm. Shelly, kick out to Kroll. McDermott quickly back the other way. Pulls it out. Good job of Nebraska getting back in transition defense. Gobel inside to Buffelli. Had great position there. Great find she did. She sealed Markowski up the lane and was able to receive the pass for an easy lay-in. Turnover for the Huskers. McDermott up to Goble. Great job of Goble running the floor hard. Again, the defensive pressure, the turnover, ill-advised pass by Maddie Kroll leads to easy basket on the other end. You and I cuts the lead to nine. Sticking with that matchup zone. Coach Williams had that as a key to her game that when you and I was throwing those match, those differing defenses at them, they needed to be able to handle it and still play with poise. Ooh, what a feed from Shelly Markowski. Can't convert, but she gets her own miss and is headed to the line. Great find by Shelly. Markowski unfortunately unable to convert the first attempt, but she stuck with it. 
Grabbed a tough rebound, and she's headed to the line. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. Great deflection by Kendall Coley that time. She's got really long arms. She was able to get a hand up in the passing lane. Great deflection. Wharton guarding Shelly very tough. And you get called for the foul. It's good defense by Wharton, the freshman. Seventh WNIT appearance for Nebraska. UNI has been a familiar face to the WNIT. They made a big run in 2021, went all the way to the semifinals. Last year, fell in the second round. So this, this round here is where they made their exit a year ago. 14-point lead for Nebraska. Great ball pressure by Kendall Moriarty. She's really not letting them have any room. Lauby has nowhere to go with the ball. Loose ball. Great hustle by Moriarty. Kendall Moriarty, boy, she's playing some big minutes in replace of Sam Hybe. The great thing if you're a young girl out there watching today, there's so many ways you can impact the game besides scoring. Kendall Moriarty does those things. She plays tough defense. She gets the rebound. She gets on the floor for balls. you got to love to see that as a Nebraska Cornhusker fan. Northern Iowa is trying to use a lot of ball screens off the top to try to get their guards open, and Nebraska's defense is just stifling them. Hake pulls it back out. Monty Stewart in, also for Nebraska. You and I is going back to just the straight-up man-to-man defense. Kendall Coley pulls up jumper is good. Moriarty. Kendall Moriarty, not Kendall Coley, Kendall Moriarty. And she's really stepped into this game and just made such a big impact since Heidi went down. You've got to love to see that as a coach. Playing with a lot of confidence. That man-to-man -man defense by Nebraska has been effective all game. Northern Iowa hasn't gotten any easy shots. And there's a, another not easy shot, but Lauby puts it up for three, stops the drought. And Nebraska had great initial defense, but the uh, hustle for the rebound, everybody got lost a little bit on defense, and Lauby, great job of stepping up and hitting that three. You and I really needed that. Good pass inside. Shelly to Coley. Can Coley, one of those players, too, that doesn't um, shoot the ball often, but she put herself in a great position and then great finish with the left hand. The three by Lauby on the last possession was their first three of the second half for you and I. You and I's pushing a little bit more. They've been struggling on offense. They haven't been able to get an easy shot. So I think that last time down you saw kind of a shot early in the shot clock, just trying to get something to go. Shelly kick out to Hake. Off the mark and out of bounds. You and I basketball. Great find by Shelly. Jess Shelley, 13 points, six assists, five rebounds. She's done a little bit of everything for this Cornhusker team all season. Zero turnovers Showing as again well. Tonight. You and I is really going to have to find an adjustment, uh, be a little more crisp with our sets, just try to find a way to get to the basket, maybe get into the paint and be able to kick out for an open shot. Izzy Bourne back into the game for Nebraska. Finley for three. Short. That is another double-double for Izzy Bourne. Back-to-back double-doubles here in the WNIT. That was a good find by, a oh, great find by Callan Hake. She drew the double team, got to the low block. Stewart got herself to an open position and great find by Hake. I'm glad you saw it because the referee was right in my vision. So, <laughs> thanks partner. Yep. And Maya McDermott, the play before that, she had a great find of finding Finley in the corner. And Finley actually had an open look. It just did not fall. So Northern Iowa's just struggling today with their shooting, which is uncharacteristic for them. 56-39, Nebraska leading Northern Iowa. And again, you're seeing solid defensive effort by Nebraska. UNI is just struggling to find any sort of flow on offense. Taken away by the Huskers, and Shelly gets a finish on the other end. Shot the passing lane. Again, when you're applying ball pressure, you're able to get steals on the pass because you're getting the offense sped up. 19-point lead for Nebraska. 
And the crowd is getting loud here inside Pinnacle Bank Arena. Haytala tries to silence him a little bit, draws the foul. Really strong take there, and Haytala's been doing that the whole game. She's been able to get into the rim. She's a strong enough body. She's able to get herself to the rim. She put it up the basket that time, just a little too much contact by Bourne. Shelly heads to the bench. Haytala gets a first one. If they can come away with two here, that'd be great. She's not the greatest three-point shooter at 57%, so they'd be pleased. She got one. If she gets both of them here, that's great for Northern Iowa. They've got to start getting some stops, buckling down, figuring out a way to, to get Nebraska out of their rhythm. Um, again, this game isn't out of reach with their three-point shooting, but they're going to have to figure out a way to slow down this Nebraska offense. Hake. It looks Running like the point a little bit for Nebraska. Born for three, no good. And the Northern Iowa that time again man, was in a, a little 2-1-2 two -two zone, so yet another version of a zone that they've thrown at the Huskers. Northern. 15 on the shot clock, under 30 to go here in this third period. McDermott on the take, wow, nice finish. Great body control, she was able to get herself past the primary defender and able to lay it up off the glass. She's been quiet. 12 points for her. Northern Iowa's trying to do again, a little matchup zone. Skip pass over to Moriarty. Have yourself a day, Kendall Moriarty. And we've seen the defense is switching up by Northern Iowa. Almost every time they've went to a zone or a matchup zone of some sort, Nebraska has made them pay. is uh, points off turnovers. Season high in steals is 14 against Houston Christian. You're seeing another one right there, just a great deflection by Jazz Shelley. Great heads up play by Markowski to grab it. Shelley for three. And Markowski goes down. He kind of tipped it up. Markowski was a former volleyball player, a great player <laughs> in high school too, and she just tried to tip that one right back up. It almost went in. That would have been a fantastic play. What good body control. Is that on Finley? Did they get Finley? Yep. It's on Finley. Huskers ball underneath. Looks like Northern Iowa is going back with this matchup zone. Kroll, kick out to Shelley. Skip pass over to Bourne. Bourne on the drive. Another tip up by Markowski. This one going to be off the Huskers. Looks like the adjustment that Coach Warren is making is she's hoping this matchup zone will uh, get Nebraska to take some shots that they don't want to take. I think she's hoping that they're able to slow them down a little bit on the inside. Over to Finley for three. They've just been off today, uncharacteristically. Very much so, but Nebraska really needs to start identifying sooner because they can get hot at any time. Great ball movement from Nebraska. That would have gone down. The roof might have come off this place. McDermott pulls up, drains another one. Great pull-up jumper by McDermott. Trying to score in transition. The defense wasn't completely set. She was able to attack her defender and get to a nice spot and had her feet under her. What a great shot. It was a long two, I believe, not, not quite a three-pointer. Yes, it was a two. Markowski double team. Northern Iowa looking to pick up the pressure a little bit here too, try to cause some turnovers. Last possession, they were in a matchup zone. Now they're back to their straight up man-to-man -man defense. Shot clock winding down. Shelly, jumper, gets her own miss. Back to Bourne. Nebraska needs to make sure they're not settling for just the three-pointers because that's what Northern Iowa is trying to get them to do here. Um, they need to make sure they're still attacking, trying to get paint touches as well. Again, shot clock winding down. And Goebel, a little too aggressive there. She is great on the defensive end. Leads the team in, both in blocks and steals. Is top ten in the conference in both categories as well. Has got that lo those long arms and does a, wrecks a lot of havoc on the defensive end. Exactly. And... You can see right there also just the hustle, which is another reason for steals. And as a freshman, that's amazing to see. Speaking of hustle, McDermott with the steal and finish. 
That's what you and I needs to do. They need to try to get these turnovers, turn defense into easy offense to get their way back in this game. Cuts Nebraska's lead to 14. Kroll on the take pull-up jumper, drains it. Good recognition by Maddie Kroll. They left the middle of that zone pretty wide open. She was able to get to the middle of the zone. That's a great shot for Maddie Kroll. Moriarty with another takeaway. Great Her steal on the defensive end by Nebraska. Now they need to really execute on the offensive end. Just like that. Izzy Bourne from the top of the key. Again, if you're Northern Iowa, you cannot leave Izzy Bourne open today. She's having such a great game. She's got the confidence. She's shooting from scoring inside. She's shooting the three today. Those minutes because Sam Hybe left there in that first half. She has returned. She went back to the locker room, has returned. She's behind the bench over there, but in street clothes. So not sure of her status, but is obviously done for today. Exactly. And Kendall Moriarty, the sophomore, I mean, great job of stepping up and answering the call. Um, Sam Hybe went down. She's been such an integral part of this team. But, again, they've played without her at the beginning of the season as well. So Kendall Morty has that confidence that she knows she can come in and do some great things. I mean, three three steals in her time, that's been maybe one of the biggest impacts in addition to the, sh to the shots she's hit. Haytala for three, knocks it down. Getting a little bit of a broken play on the defensive end. Haytala, great recognition, called for the ball, and – even though they've been struggling today, they're going to keep letting it fly. Back to a matchup zone from Northern Iowa. Again, you're going to see these changing defenses just trying to keep Nebraska out of their rhythm. Coach Williams said how they handle these changing defenses was going to be a big key to the game. What's the key to that? Just handling when every time down the floor you're seeing a different defense. The biggest thing is continuing to play with your pace. You can't slow down. You can't take too long to recognize that they switched the defense. You have to recognize it immediately so that you can get right into your offensive set That because obviously they practice offensive sets against the zone. They practice them against that man. So it's quick recognition and not allowing them to slow down your pace. Inside to Markowski for two. Strong move by Markowski. They, she was able to get low block position, her sweet spot there, and just turned around and was able to go up strong. Inside to Buffella, nice move inside. And trading really strong baskets on the inside. What a great move. She just caught it on the low block and was made a quick, quick move before the double team could come and put it in. Buffella with eight points. Out to Markowski. Off the mark. And out of bounds. I think Maggie thought it might have been off of Nebraska, so she lets it go out of bounds. Exactly, and, and Maddie Kroll actually released a little soon on that. If Maddie Kroll had stayed there, it would have came right back to her. She released, and Mendelson, I think, yeah, thought it was off of a Panther. See if Nebraska can pick up the pressure again and what kind of offense UNI is going to run to try to start getting some shots here. Hey, till another three. Gets her own miss. Over to Green. Misses everything out of bounds. Nebraska basketball. Nebraska is going to want to clean up the rebounding here in these last five minutes of the game. They're really going to have to focus on getting rebounds. They allowed extra shots there. In a normal situation, Northern Iowa, if they're allowed that second opportunity with an offensive rebound, they're going to take advantage of it. Inside of Markowski, double team, kick out. Kroll for three, top of the key. You bet. Again, Northern Iowa, it looks like their strategy is going to be they're going to send a quick double team on the post and hope that they can't get a good kick out. Uh, Markowski kept her composure and was able to kick it out to an open curl. McDermott gets the ball back on a loose ball, picks up her dribble, calls a timeout. You can see right there the third largest home crowd of the season. Nebraska fans have done it all season long. They're in the top 15. But how about this postseason crowd for these two teams here in the WNIT? Exactly. It's fantastic for the sport of women's basketball. So obviously we're at Nebraska. At a, at Nebraska has the home crowd. But even for the Northern Iowa Panthers, to be able to play in front of a crowd like this, it just gains you that experience for postseason play. Because I know both programs are hoping to continue to 
go to the postseason every year. And anytime you have a chance to play in front of a crowd, whether you're the visiting team or the home team, it's great for you and it's great for the sport of women's basketball. As a player, this is what you play for, right? To, yes. to have a crowd like this, and it's been loud. The, the crowd has been in it. Back on February 18th against Iowa, 14,289, the single game attendance, the most ever, the biggest crowd ever for a women's athletic event here in Lincoln. Exactly, and you love to see it. I know the Iowa matchup was a big matchup for them, and they really wanted the crowd to help. But, again, great for the sport of women's basketball. And they're going to call Kinnacoli the push-off, trying to get open for the ball in that inbounds play. Izzy Bourne back in for Coley. And the experience that UNI is gaining for some of their younger players. I mean, Goble has been playing a lot of minutes in this game. You know, they're gaining experience in a hostile environment at an away game during postseason play, and that's invaluable as you're building your program from year to year. Shelly over to Kroll. Thought about it. Back over to Bourne. Northern Iowa's went back to their man-to-man -man defense. They got out of that matchup zone. Out of bounds, off of UNI. See Goble flying in, trying for another steal. She's really good about reading the passes, jumping a passing lane, and like you said earlier with those long arms, that's why she leads their team with steals. 15 on the shot clock. Shelly pulls it up. You and I have really got to be focusing right now on getting stops and then making sure they convert on the other end. So got a great turnover right there. Now they have to make sure they convert. They can't come up with empty possessions here in the last four minutes of the game. Well, he gave McDermott some space, got lucky there. Shelly ahead to Bourne. And one. Fantastic job again of Izzy Bourne running the floor. Jazz Shelly able to find her. Hopefully both players took a tumble. Hopefully they come out okay. But just reward that big. When she makes a rim run, you've got to find her with the ball. And great focus on the, on the basket to finish that. And chance for a three-point play. There's McDermott there on the hustle back to try to stop the transition. So Izzy Bourne, 17 points, 11 rebounds. Coming off the double-double, double, 16 points, 12 rebounds in the WNIT opener. Misses the free throw there. Again, Northern Iowa really needs to focus on Getting this stop at some point, I would imagine you maybe see them picking up to full court pressure. Um, obviously, that'll be a lot easier if they can see one go through the basket, get a made shot so they can set up some full court pressure. Buffelli to the rim and finish. Great take by Buffelli and great use of her body. She had Mendelssohn guarding her with that height at 6'5", but she used her body very well to shield off Mendelssohn and attack the basket hard. Turnover, another one for Nebraska. They were so good in the first half, have turned it over a lot more here in the second half. That's exactly Luke. what Northern Iowa needs. They need to keep getting turnovers, pressure Nebraska on the defensive end, make them play faster than they want to. And then they again try to shoot a three up there to try to get themselves back in this game because they're going to have to shoot some threes to kind of get their way back in it. That was very close, unfortunately, didn't fall. Seven turnovers for the Huskers here in the second half. You said it, not to jinx them, but <laughs> seven in the in the second half after yeah. having zero in the first half. Now Nebraska is going to want to use some clock management, which is what you're seeing. So with this lead, they're going to want to make sure they don't slow down their play necessarily, but they definitely use a lot of the shot clock before they're taking a shot. Shelly to the rim draws the foul. And obviously hitting free throws will be crucial. Um, they do have a little bit of a lead here, but just, you know, anytime you can hit your free throws at the end of a game is, is key. Fouls on Haitala, her third. Nebraska is 11 for 13. 12 for 14 from the free throw line today. Northern Iowa is going to need to push pace. Um, again, they're not going to take a bad shot, but they need to get and. You cannot give that up here in the last two and a half minutes of the game, but great rebound by Ani Stewart. Again, clock management. They're going to want to uh, continue to play with some pace, but don't take too quick of a shot. Try to use up some of that shot clock. Northern Iowa is going to need to try to keep them sped up. Loose ball off you and I. 
Say Nebraska basketball, 227 left in the fourth. Kendall Coley in for Jazz Shelley. It's a nice ovation from the crowd here inside PBA. Kroll misses and out of bounds off of Nebraska. Not a bad shot out of the inbounds, it's low on the shot clock. Um, had a good look at it. You and I is gonna have to try to get a set here to shoot some threes, try to get back as much as they can. 17 point lead for Nebraska. Quickly approaching the two minute mark. Goble. I don't know if Haight got a piece of that or if, um, or if she just, Morgan just missed, but. Under two to play. Hey, the freshman to the rim, no good. Seeing her be more aggressive though today. Exactly, that you, uh, if you're Coach Williams, you like to see that from your younger players, having the confidence in postseason to attack the rim that hard. And Nebraska's gonna play solid defense and need to get a box out. I'll be with another miss from three. And Haight wisely slows it down. Bring it up, run through their set. Use as much clock as possible. 115, nice. Give and go, but Kroll draws the foul. It's a great set that Nebraska runs where they throw it to Maddie Kroll at the top. Instead of doing ball reversal, she comes right back to the same side and just makes a quick slash cut to the basket. They were able to find her for the, for the shot. She got fouled. Kroll, eight points now on the day. Very balanced scoring attack from Nebraska today. And foul on Kendall Coley on the rebound. Nebraska had contributions from a lot of players today, which they needed to see after Hybe went down. Approaching the one minute mark. Nebraska up 18. Haytala for three, short. Rebound, Hake. Unfortunately for Northern Iowa today, the three-point shot just was not falling. They had an uncharacteristic cold shooting night. And as I say, sometimes for teams that live by the three, you also die by the three. And unfortunately, they also weren't able to get anything going inside. Crowd on their feet here inside PBA. Kroll to the rim and the roll. Great use of her body, way to shield off the defender and just find a way to get up off the glass. 20 point lead for Nebraska, 30 seconds left. Okay, if you've seen the whole game, this younger squad, you and I does have a younger you know, group of girls and they've just been struggling to find a lot today with that pressure Nebraska has been applying. Coley with the block and Kroll gonna hold it. As the time clicks off, 20 point victory for Nebraska, 77 to 57 win over UNI in the second round of the WNIT. Nebraska move, moves on to the Super 16. The first time in program history that they've won two home games in the postseason. How big is that? It's so huge for the program and they've been building every year for this. And Coach Williams has to be pleased with how her team came out today and executed the game plan. They did not allow Northern Iowa, Iowa anything easy from the three-point line. The three-point shots that they did get were typically off of a broken play. So you've got to be pleased if you're Nebraska to have contributions from everybody on the team to have them execute the game plan. And